there's a way to quantify this, and we're not going to do too much with this, but you should see this just in case you run into it in later applications. The relationship or a way to sort of quantify or encapsulate how energy and momentum are stored in electromagnetic fields is with something called the pointing vector. Which is a great name because vectors point, of course, but it's actually someone named Pointing actually came up with this thing. So I, I thought that was that, you know, just fantastic here. We have this pointing vector, which is given the vector, the symbol S. It's equal to 1 over mu naught E cross B. Okay? So we already know that E cross B is going to give us the direction of propagation. So this pointing vector, at least for radiation, points in the direction of propagation. And in particular, it points uh, in the direction direction of the electromagnetic momentum. Okay, so the direction of the momentum is given by E cross B. It also points. in the direction of energy flow. Which, again, makes sense when you're thinking about radiation because energy is flowing outward from some source to, okay, so energy is flowing outward from our antenna in the direction of propagation, okay, to deliver energy to this, to this uh, receiver, okay. So this pointing vector is the direction, it gives the direction of energy flow or direction of momentum. What, what is this quantity? What's the units? The units are actually uh, watts per meter squared. So this is the energy per second per area or a quantity called energy flux, which isn't the same as electric flux, which we've talked about. But it's how much, and if you have a square meter, for example, and you want to think about how much energy is being delivered to this area per unit time, say, for example, by the sun. If, you have, if you're talking about solar energy, again, the theme here, uh, solar energy being delivered to some particular area uh, we want the power per unit area, something that's sometimes called the intensity or the irradiance as well. Uh, energy flux, how much energy is being delivered per unit time to a particular location. And if you wanted to, you could even work this out for radiation because you could say that uh, E, again, E for radiation, and B are perpendicular. So if you plug this in, we know that the cross product is going to give us two vectors that are at a, an angle of 90 degrees. So it works out for radiation that we have 1 over mu naught E rad just times B rad. And once again, because B rad is uh, E squared over C, we could just write this out as E rad times E rad over C. Uh, or excuse me, t, uh, C times E red. B is equal to C times. No, E over C. That's right. E over C. E over C. And so when you work it all out and do all the, you get all the constants. This works out to be epsilon naught C times E red squared again. So once again, energy proportional to energy flow proportional to the square of the uh, magnitude of the of the field. Okay. Um, all right. Again, we're not going to talk too much about that, but you may run into it. Let's let's try this. This is kind of a fun problem. Pretty straightforward, but let's say you have, let's say you know the power output of the sun, and we can measure that. Okay, it's four times ten to the twenty-six watts. So every second, four times ten to the twenty-six joules of energy are being emitted by the sun in all directions. Okay. We want to think about the power, this, this energy flux, the power per unit area uh, delivered at the Earth's location, which is 1.5 times 10 to the 11th meters away. 
So in other words, we're looking for the irradiance or the intensity at the Earth's location. It might be a good thing to know, say you were trying to design a, um, solar, pa a solar panel, let's say that a solar panel that was one meter square in uh, area, and you wanted to know how much energy could you possibly deliver to the solar panel per, per unit uh, time. So think about how you would calculate it. Talk it over with your neighbor. Think about how you would calculate the energy per unit area at the Earth's location. The hint here is that, again, radiation, this, this total power is being delivered in all directions. So it's going everywhere. So think about how you'd have to figure it out at the Earth's location. That's a good question. Um, I'll probably look it up. Let's see if it's in the back of the book here. Uh, mass of the sun, radi oh, radius of the sun. Radius of the sun is 7 times 10 to the 8th meters. If you really want to know, I don't think it's going to be relevant to you, but if you really want to know, I'll draw a little diagram that might help. Here's the sun. 1.5 times 10 to the 11th meters away is the earth, which is where we're interested in. And the sun's energy is being delivered in all directions. So after you wait a certain amount of time, a pulse of energy from the sun will be spread out over, well, think about it. Yeah, so now we're not dealing with energy density, energy per unit volume. We're dealing with, again, energy flux, energy flowing through an area. So think about what area you would need. Okay, so 1,400 watts per square meter. How would you get it? How did you calculate it? Or did you just take a guess because it looked like a good number? You guessed. Okay. All right. Con this is really is nothing more than, than an application of conservation of energy, right? If, if there's energy being emitted by the sun in all directions, imagine sort of at, at time t equals zero, some pulse of electromagnetic radiation gets emitted by the sun. Now, it's continuous. We know that. But let's just sort of travel this or, or think about this traveling pulse. And it starts at the sun and it goes outward and a little time later it's farther outward and a little time later it's farther outward until it reaches the radius corresponding to the location of the Earth, right? At that point, that pulse of radiation, it's still the same total amount of energy if you added up all the radiation over the entire area, right? But the power or the, rate, the energy per unit area has gone down because this original pulse of energy, which was originally just spread out over the surface area of the sun, is now spread out over what area? Yeah, the surface area of 93 million miles or 1.5 times 10 to the 11th meters, that radius, right? And that surface area, how do we calculate that surface area? No, not four-thirds pi r cubed. That's the volume. Four pi r squared. Four pi r squared. So it's just going to be the power, which hasn't changed, of four times 10 to the 26th divided by the area, which is four times pi times 1.5 times 10 to the 11th meters squared. And you end up getting 1,400 watts per square meter, which is sometimes called the insulation, not, not to be confused with insulation, but insulation, meaning how much solar energy per unit area is being delivered to the Earth, okay? Which is an important number to know, again, if you want to design a, uh, a, uh, a, solar, uh, a solar panel and collect some certain amount of energy per unit time, okay? You'd collect, be able, at maximum, be able to collect 1,400 watts per meter squared, okay? It would depend on whether the it was a sunny day, and how efficient your solar panel would be. Yes, question. Uh, it's just the surface. It's the surface area of this sphere where the Earth is that far that far away, right? And so you're not looking at you're not looking at just this area because that original power four, four times ten to the twenty six watts joules per second. So the amount of energy in one second would be four times ten to the twenty six joules, for example, right? That 4 times 10 to 26 joules is spread over the entire surface of the sun when it's released. And as it spreads out at the speed of light, 
it's now spread over the entire area of a sphere corresponding to a radius around the sun being equal to the radius of, that the Earth is that far away. Does that, does that make sense? Okay. So there's really not, I mean, there's not much to it. It's just thinking about conservation of the energy being spread over a surface area. 